I did it. 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 I read all three books on my March TBR. And to me, that is super exciting because going from February into March, I was in a reading slump, just having a hard time even having interest in reading. And so the fact that I finished all three books that I was planning on was great. It probably helped that all three are space operas, so they are my jam. And they're all sequels or continuations in series. So it was something I was already invested in. So the first book I finished in March was A Better Part of Valor by Tanya Huff. And this is still following Staff Sergeant Kerr. However, in this book, she has been pulled from her normal group to go on a special assignment. And this is an assignment of where soldiers from multiple groups have been pulled into one unit. And it's to go investigate an unknown ship. And her you know, job is to keep everyone uh, as much as possible alive. I think the first book was more introducing you to the different races. It was, and it was more military like focused and it was set on a planet for the majority of the book. And so I was kind of like, mm, maybe not so much space opera, but definitely still sci-fi. Here you do have the space opera elements that I was hoping more for in the first one. I was sad that we didn't get to have some of our original characters because I really liked the dynamics of her unit, but it was interesting to see how um, military personnel who haven't met before can come together and bond, and because of their training, they can still work together effectively and efficiently. The only thing I didn't like about this um, book is this time the author did decide to put romance in the book, and I, for me, I just didn't buy it the the payoff all of it I'm just like nope not interested this guy was not my type definitely and I didn't see how he was cursed or Torrin's type so that was the one downer part of this book it was great to get to see new races um, from the alien confederation that they are in as well as the normal the normal races that are in the military and just to see the different personalities of how different societies work, co-work in, together or friction off of one another, even when they are allies. So overall, I gave this book four stars and I look forward to continuing the series. The second book I finished in the month of March was A Desolation Called Peace by Arcady Martin. I'm going to link my spoiler-free review in the cards above. This is following Mahit and 3C Grass primarily, but also we get to see the point of view of 8 Antidote, who was the child 90% clone of the previous emperor from the first book. And then we also got two new person, or yeah, we got two new points of view from 9 Hibiscus and 20 Cicada. Not so, like, it was more interludes from 20 Cicada, it was more Nine Hibiscus, but I really enjoyed, you know, seeing this other point of view from a different section of life. Since doing my spoiler-free review, I have had a chance to think more about this book, and that's the thing that Martine is really great at. She's really great at making you think and really considering everything. Um, I would definitely say that her writing is very poetic, and because it has a beauty to the words as you're reading it, you can, it, it would be something that you could read out loud and it would still flow just beautifully. But at the same time, you know, every word that is there is, is meant to be there and it, very specific. I did feel that there was a little too many words that would not be as familiar to uh, readers. And so you might need a dictionary for some of them, especially if you want to know exactly what is being meant by the words that the characters are choosing. Like I said, word choice matters in this book, but it is beautiful. It was interesting to see the progression of the relationship between Mahit and Three Seagrass. You could, I could still see where they wanted to work with one another. All right, in my view, I could see where Martine was beginning to touch upon the issues of depression and PTSD, 
but I don't think she fully had that fleshed out in this book. I'm not quite sure how long between the first book and the second book the events were, but it didn't feel like it was too much time. I don't think it was more than a year. Yeah, I mean, I could still see where some characters were processing, but as she was introducing these, it produced more conflict with communication between the characters, and it was conflict that I felt could have been it's the miscommunication trope that I just don't like. If they had just sat down and talked with one another, it could have been figured out in five minutes. So yeah, so I think some some of her choices of how to handle the intrigue between the characters, it was just a mess for me. I do think Martine touched upon an interesting conversation that happens in real life of the uh, the concept of the other and how we talk about one another, to each other, in front of each other, behind each other. And I feel like Mahit was, that was one of the themes of, or that othering was one of the themes of this book. So there was something that I felt that this book suffered from second book syndrome. Uh, I, I don't necessarily think we needed the second book, but I don't think that the second book could or can stand on its own. Uh, story-wise. You you would, you have to read the first book to follow the second book. But the way the first book ended, you don't need more. Uh, the way this book ends, you don't need more either. So I don't know like how big of a series Martine is planning to do. I did end up giving this uh, book a four stars. And then the third book that I finished in the month of March was Heaven's Queen by Rachel Bach. This was the third book in her trilogy. of I think it's called her Paradox Trilogy. So this is the third book following Deviana Morris. From the, in the first book, we find out she's a powered armor user and her biggest goal is to be part of an elite fight or military unit, fighting unit. You can't, you can't apply to the unit that she wants to work for. They have to come to you. So she's been given the tip that if she works on the ship, the captain will put in a recommendation or a referral for her, and then they can come and choose her. I can't say too much about the third book because it is the third book and obviously holds spoilers for the first two, but I do think it wrapped up well. I think Deviano stayed true to herself. You do see growth um, throughout the three books and different personality quirks she has, but overall I think that the total time that this book goes is about it's about a year her time there has been other time shifts as they go through space which makes it longer that like she's been off earth or on, which makes it longer that she's been off paradox her the planet where she grows up or the planet where she is from but i don't think it, it time wise for her i don't think it is like maybe a year year and a half it's a pretty quick um, book overall for her. So you're not going to see a ton of growth, but you will see that she, her character is learning and progressing. And some of her flaws from the first book, she is not doing in the third book. But again, I do think it wraps up very nicely. There were some cliche stuff at the end, how it ended, but I do feel like overall... It ended well, and this is a series that I will probably reread in a year or so just to see, do I still like it? That is all I finished for the month of March. I did continue working on Engaging the Enemy by Elizabeth Moon, and then I also started Pierre Nassi by Suzanne Clark. I hope you guys all had a great March reading month and that you didn't have a reading slump that you had to get out of. If you have read any of these books or want to talk more about them, please leave me a comment down below. Thank you and have a good day.